All right. So we have my sketch. I cropped my sketch. This is in Photoshop. This is all about resolution size so that you do all this work and you have something you can print at a good size. I check the image size. I need to make sure it is more than 8 by 10 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch. And unlike Photo-P, Photoshop has the right <laughs> abbreviations here, right? This is PPI, pixels per inch. I recommend, if you're doing it with Photoshop in this lab, I recommend it being around 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. That way we can print it to our largest size we need which is 16 by 20 inches, and it will still be good print quality. Why is mine 11 by 16.5 if I say 11 by 14? That's because my sketch has a certain height and width ratio. If I want to force it to be 11 by 14, I can do that by breaking the aspect ratio, by clicking on this padlock or this chain link and forcing that 16 to be 14. But there's no real advantage to that because I don't like that formatting of the sketch, right? It just squeezed it, so I'm gonna do Command-Z. But what's important is that my pixels are high enough quality pixels, not from my sketch, because these are trash. These were forced to be bigger, right? From my camera phone. Instead, the pixels in this space, the potential for the pixels is high enough for high quality images. So now I need to start bringing those images in. How do I get those images? I use sites like Pixabay, way better than Google Image Search for lots of reasons. And I'm looking for barbecued leg bones, right? And unfortunately, it knows exactly what I want, but what those have are sponsored stock images from iStock at the bottom and from iStock at the top. But those aren't free to use. So if I try to use those without paying for them, and you don't need to pay to, to learn these educational things. I have to, I'm limited to what people have donated in Pixabay. But I can limit these searches. I can limit them just to photographs. I can limit them just to things that are, I pretty much want full color. I can limit to black and white, but that doesn't help me. And I found this image. And it's, meat barbecue on a grill and maybe that's a better way to go so maybe if i just do grill leg bone bbq i get a lot of the same ah but here i get some grilled shrimp and that steak that might be interesting right click on that open link in new tab but I need it to be a barbecue leg bone. And you know what? This is a chicken wing. It's close enough. And I already opened that one. So I've opened up lots of ones, but I haven't downloaded any yet. And it takes patience to find good reference. And there are still 150 more pages I could scroll through of free content, right? Because people like to photograph their barbecue. But I'm looking for the thing that's going to go with my vision. And actually, this is probably the the most landscape-like one. So now what do I do? I go to those pages that I've opened. And this is if I have not logged in, I can download them up to the second highest resolution. So you click on download. Remember, to use something, it needs to be at least a thousand pixels in its smallest dimension. And so that fits. And then I'll hit download, and then it downloads to my downloads folder. It allows me to donate to the, the person who donated the image. You don't need to do that and I can move on to the next. But if I log in, which I recommend, but won't require, you would create an account by clicking on join. I already have an account, it's just with my Google. So when I log in, you'll notice that I'm able to download it at the full resolution. And if you create an account and you donate images, and I like to donate the images that I create for this assignment. So if I look at my, my media, right? These are all past fantasy composites I've done as demos. And I download those. 
and they get accepted because they have to get curated, right? Uh, then I get to use the whole service of Pixabay without any ads at all. So it's not going to show me any Shutterstock things anymore. If I look for something like lollipops, there's 472 images I can use. And I can right click on them, high quality, and I can download the highest quality. Download. So I've opened quite a few. I'm just going to start downloading these at the highest quality. These computers can take it. Oh, but since I wasn't logged in, I'd have to refresh this in order for it to log me in. There we go. And then you can close them because they're, they're downloaded. So a lot of grabbing, ah, a lot of grabbing good quality image resources that you'll sort through later. Now, why am I not going to use this one? Well, because this isn't a photograph. This is a digital painting. Nothing wrong with digital paintings, but if I use this as a way of making my concept art, then I'd also have to find digital painting for all my other aspects. Digital paintings of lollipops, digital paintings of clouds. I don't want that. So photography is the easiest way to get consistent, and that's not even good enough to use, consistent uh, elements. Okay. Bodhi downloaded that one. And then photography is based on the way the people use the camera, right? So sometimes things are out of focus. And you don't want content that's out of focus for this. You want things that are sharp and in focus. And maybe I'm going to cut that out and use it as a boulder or as one of the elements to, to fill in my sketch. Definitely down, download more reference than you're going to use because you need options. I know it's kind of pointless just watching someone download resources, but that's a big part of compositing, finding good collage materials. Notice all of these are well above 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. And this one with the cellophane, I thought it might be interesting. I'll download it, but I don't think I'm actually going to use it. But this is a high, really, really high quality reference. These are great. This is rock candy. The problem is... This is what's called a narrow depth of field. So by photographing something in the palm of the hand, they've made it look bigger by having it blurry in front, foreground, middle ground, sharpen and focus, background blurry. But if I use that, I would only be able to use the small amount of it that's in focus. And that's just a little too limited. So if you notice that something isn't good quality right from the beginning, just don't download it. Now I need these kind of Cotton candy peaks, cupcake frosted peaks. So it doesn't mean I can only use food. I can also use some of these real mountains. I think that's the Matterhorn in Switzerland. Mount Shasta in California. Once you start doing a lot of image searching, you're going to start to notice that some places are more photographed on this planet than others, right? So it's about finding interesting angles, interesting uh, compositions, interesting atmospheric effects. I'm also going to need help with my middle ground, especially because I'm doing a lot of candy. I need space for that candy to exist, right? So I need a middle ground. And this is a great reference for that. It has the background. It's got middle ground. It goes into an empty foreground. So this will just help kind of fill in some of the gaps. And it's 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. And there is a ton of good landscape reference on Pixabay. And I really love the misty clouds in the far off mountains in that. So you're just going to use aspects of these, just like you did with using edited aspects of the line art for exercise one. Here we have a nice cupcake peak. It can be like a, a foreground element. So it's not just lollipops. And another one, people love to photograph their cupcakes. And this one's great, except we have that depth of field problem again, right? We got foreground, middle ground, background. It's too blurry. Even though it's a high quality 
image, it's not in focus, so it doesn't help me with my compositing. Now, let's see what this looks like in Google Images, because remember, the only things in Pixabay are things people donate. So now let's look at the copyrighted stuff. There is an artist I like, based in Boston, named Will Cotton. Will Cotton, uh, he lectured at, at one of my schools, and so I know about his work. What's really cool about Will Cotton's work, he does these really, really photorealistic oil paintings, large scale, but he does them based on actual, uh, what's called food design, like stage setups. So he learned all about food design, which is for like making photographs of food for magazines, where you never use whipped cream, you never use ice cream, you always use shaving cream because it can hand up, stand up to the lights, that kind of thing. And then he creates these environments like this. You can see it's just all made with pieces of sponge cake and then a lot of shaving cream, candy apples, lollipops, open image and new tab. This is our Google search way of doing it. So it's not huge, but this is really helpful in terms of layering, right? So it can help with some of those middle ground things. And this is just one of his setups that then he later makes one of his paintings of. Now I'm interested in this photograph of the setup. So I'm going to save that image, even though it's copyrighted. It's owned by whoever made that. He calls them maquettes. This was for a root beer falls landscape that he painted. But these are what his paintings look like. Now the reason I'm not compositing with his paintings is because they look painted. Even though he's a photorealistic painter, that's very different than being actual photographs. You guys agree? And because this series of landscapes is basically my idea, right? We're always influenced by things we've seen before. I want to make mine very different than this. And this was a root beer flood. But maybe that Google image will be helpful, the one I downloaded. Now, what's the difference between this and a Pixabay image? It's not quite as big. Oh, I thought I downloaded it. Let's make sure I do. It's not quite as big, so I'm going to open the, the link in a new tab, just so I can see it. And then I'm going to open the image in a new tab so I can save it. And that's as big as it is, right? I can't zoom in on it more. So save that image. Oh, it's saved to the desktop. And I'm going to save it to downloads so I know where to find it. All of your stuff from Pixabay is naturally going to go to downloads. Remember, you can always hit F11 to get back to your desktop. And so now I'm going to drag all that stuff from downloads into my assignment folder, my assignment one folder. It's going to grab all of it. Way more than five, but you're required to use at least five. Doesn't mean I'm going to use all 22 of these. And then there's some from the desktop I want to use. Where did it go? Here it is. The Will Cotton maquette. All right. Now, if I just start taking these images, they're like magazine pages for a collage artist. I'm going to shrink the one or erase the one that's smaller. And I'm going to bring in my background images first, the ones that are the furthest back. Because if I was building this as a traditional collage, I'd first put the sky down, and then I'd put stuff on top of the sky, and then I'd put stuff on top of that stuff, and on top of that stuff, right? So I know I want this kind of poofy cloud sky. And instead of, I'm trying to show you all the different ways you can get images for this project. Instead of looking up clouds on Pixabay, which I could certainly do, or on Google Image Search, I just took pictures of clouds on campus the other day. Right? They were nice and poofy. I like Texas clouds in the heat because they all look like the opening of The Simpsons. And now I'm going to download it. So you can use your own pixels as well as other people's pixels for this. And sometimes it really helps just to go out and take a photo of a really interesting rock from the angle you need to put into your composite. So now I'm also going to put that into my folder. Right? There it is. And I think I already did, but just so you know where it came from. So I'm going to start with that image. I'm going to.